Chapter 23, Light, Astronomical Observations, and the Sun. The study of light, which is electromagnetic radiation, which of which visible light is only a small part of an array of energy. Electromagnetic radiation includes gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet light, visible light, infrared light, and radio waves. All forms of radiation travel 300,000 kilometers per second, or, or um, 186,000 miles per second. This known as the speed of light. So here's our electromagnetic spectrum. And this energy travels uh, primarily as a wave. Okay? And, and at different wavelengths, you have different types of energy. So right in here, in between 700 and 400 nanometers, is our visible light spectrum. Okay? As rays get, uh, the wavelength gets smaller, we head out to the ultraviolet, far and near ultraviolets, then we soften hard x-rays, and out to gamma rays. We go out past the red side, where the wavelengths gain longer and larger, we out to infrared uh, rays, and then microwave and radio waves, or FM or AM uh, radio waves. Are. Electromagnetic radiation can be described in two ways. A wave model, wavelengths of radiation vary, radio waves measure up to several kilometers long, gamma ray waves are less than a billion of a centimeter long, White light consists of several wavelengths corresponding to the colors of the rainbow. Particle mode is the other way of looking at light or electromagnetic radiation. Particles are called photons. They exert a pressure called radiation pressure on matter. Shorter wavelengths correspond to more energetic photons. Spectroscopy is the study of properties of light and that depends on wavelength. The light patterns produced by passing light through a prism, which spreads out various wavelengths, is called a spectrum. In plural, spectr spectrum are called spectra. Okay, types of spectra. Continuous spectrum produced by incandescent solid, liquid, or high-pressure gas with uninterrupted band of color. Then a dark line absorption spectrum is produced when white light is passed through a comparatively cool, low-pressure gas. It appears as continuous spectrum with dark lines running through it. And bright line emission spectrum is produced by hot incandescent gas under low pressure. Repairs as a series of bright lines under particular wavelengths depending on the gas that produced them. Most stars have a dark line spectrum. The instrument used to spread out the light is called a spectroscope. And here's some examples. So here's a nice continuous spectrum. We have our, our light bulb uh, passing light through a prism, which refracts and bends the light so that it, by wavelength, uh, in different amounts, giving us that spread out spectrum. Now, if we pass that light uh, through a cool gas, then we'll have a dark line spectrum. So the dark lines represent wavelengths that are absorbed by that cool gas. And a hot incandescent gas, okay, if there's a light of, um, of stars, uh, then we'll have a reverse, a bright line spectrum. The Doppler effect is the apparent change in wavelength of radiation caused by relative motions of the source and observer. Use the term direction of motion. So is there increasing distance, the wavelength is getting longer or stretches? Decreasing distance is compression, making wavelengths shorter. The velocity, the larger the Doppler shift, indicates how fast an object is moving. So if you're listening to the sound of an ambulance, it's approaching you, the wavelengths get shorter, getting some higher and higher pitch. On the wavelength, when the ambulance is receding, driving away from you, the wavelengths separate out, they get longer, and, and the sound gets, gets um, lower pitch. Okay, astronomical tools. We use visible light telescopes. There are two basic types of visible light tiles, telescopes. We have a refracting telescope, which uses a lens called the objective to bend or refract the light to produce an image. Light converges on an area called the focus. The eyepiece is a second lens used to examine the image directly. This has an optical effect called a chromatic aberration, so the colors can be distorted. And here's our refracting telescope. So we have our, our objective lens, okay, and a focus in the object at this point, which is upside down. So we have this eyepiece lens that, that uh, then flips the image throw it back right side up. The reflecting telescope uses a concave mirror to gather more light. There's no color distortion. Nearly all large telescopes are of this type. So here's the appearance of the galaxy in the constellation Andromeda using telescopes with different resolution. So let's say you have a, a um, refractive telescope that's 8 inches or 6 inches in diameter versus one that's 10 inches in diameter. So the picture here 
it's going to gather less light. So it's going to look a little more fuzzy, a little further away. And then with a larger telescope, you're going to get more information and you're going to get a lot more detail. Deployment of the Hubble um, Space Telescope, the telescope out in space, so we avoid some atmospheric um, uh, interference. Okay, photographic films are used to detect ultraviolet and infrared wavelengths. Okay, so also invisible radiation, non-invisible light, you want to detect. Most invisible wavelengths do not penetrate Earth's atmosphere, so balloons, rockets, and satellites are used. Okay, uh, so radi radio radiation, that does reach the Earth's surface. So we might use a radiation, I mean, sorry, radio, radiation uh, telescopes. So radio telescopes are big dish telescopes, they're very large. About 100,000 times, the radio waves are about 100,000 times longer than visible radiation, so you need a very big dish. They're often made of a wire mesh, have rather poor resolution. If you wire together to a network to, to create a radio interferometer, so here's a picture of a big dish radio, um, radio telescope. So here's the collecting areas, collecting those radio waves, okay? And then up here's a detector that's going to be measuring what's collected. Okay, so the advantages over optical telescopes, less affected by weather, less expensive, can be used 24 hours a day. Text material that does not emit visible radiation, so it can see through interstellar dust clouds as well. Very useful. Here's a 300 meter radio telescope in Arecibo, uh, Puerto Rico. So here's a collecting area, area very large, uh, with the detector area here. The Sun, one of 200 billion stars that make up the Milky Way galaxy. Only star close enough to allow the surface features to be studied. It's an average star. Its structure can be divided into four parts. It's a solar interior. It has a photosphere. The photosphere is a sphere of light. The sun's surface is actually a layer of incandescent gas less than 500 kilometers thick. Grainy texture made of many small bright markings called granules produced by convection. Most of the elements found on Earth also occur in the sun. The temperature averages approximately 6,000 degrees Kelvin, which is about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So here's our structure of the sun. We have our core and a radiation zone. Here's our photos, well, here's our, our photosphere, and we have little spicules coming out, spicules, and, um, and prominences that erupt. This is the granulation. Dark spots are the sunspots. Okay. The chromosphere is just above the photosphere, lowermost atmosphere of the sun, relatively thin, hot layer of incandescent gases, and a few thousand kilometers thick. Topmost newer spiculas, narrow jets of rising material. This is spiculas of the uh, chromosphere. The corona is the outermost portion of the solar atmosphere, very tenuous, ionized gases escape from the outer fringe and produce a solar wind. The temperatures at the top exceed 1 million degrees Kelvin. Sunspots on the solar surface, a dark center is the umbra, surrounded by a lighter region called the penumbra. Dark color is due to cooler temperature, about 1500 degrees Kelvin less than the solar surface. They follow an 11 year cycle. Large spots are strongly magnetized, pairs of op opposite magnetic poles. The plagues are um, bright centers of solar activity, they occur above sunspot clusters. And then prominences are huge arcing cloud like structures that extend into the corona. Condensations a material in the uh, corona. Uh, so, so here's a huge solar prominence. Flares are explosive events that normally last an hour or so. Sun brightening above a sunspot cluster release enormous quantities of energy. Inject particles that reach the Earth in about a day and interact with the atmosphere to cause auroras in north, let's say the northern and the southern lights. Solar interior we cannot observe directly. Uh, nuclear fusion occurs here. The source of sun's energy there is in the deep interior. Nuclear reaction produces the sun's energy is called a proton proton reaction. Uh, nuclear reaction produces, okay, four hydrogen nuclei are converted into a helium nuclei. Matter is converted to energy. 600 million tons of hydrogen is consumed each second. The sun's enough fuel to last another 5 billion years.